welcome to winning the game of life i'm your host shan chabra if you are a regular listener and viewers welcome back and and if this is the first time you are watching us or tuning in i'm your new friend shan chabra and today i have a very special guest her name is dr gail carson she is also known as sob and let us see what is sob welcome to the show gail Thank you so much. Well, SOB stands for spunky old broad, and that's what I am. So I'm proud to wear that handle. <laughs> very nice, very nice. So how about you just take us back to your journey, I don't know, maybe from your teenagers, and let us see how you became what you are today? Well, you know, I would even start earlier than that, Sean. I, I, uh, I, my first dancing recital was at the age of three. And uh, I was January, so I was the first person in the row because we went from January to December. And I did my dance and I did a somersault and my crown fell off and I put it back on and it was backwards. And the crowd started laughing and so I stopped the music and I put my hands on my hips and I waited for the, the crowd to settle down and I put the crown back on the right way and started the music again and... Uh, finished my dance and my mother said then she knew I would she would never have to worry about me so I really started very young and I told my mom at a very young age I was going to have a career and I was never going to get married and all of those wonderful things so it started very early and then when I was into high school I formed a dance team with my uh, with a friend and so we danced and sang our way through high school and then I went off to college but during that time I also had many jobs. I started working at the age of 13 when I had broken 22 pair of glasses. And my father said to me, if you break one more pair, you're going to buy them. So I went up to the optometrist's office. I picked up my 23rd pair, came downstairs, put them on the seat of the car, and sat on them. <laughs> and the only thing available was uh, babysitting to a 13-year-old, which I didn't want to do. So I went through the papers, because it was the 50s, and people stayed home, and I became an Avon lady. And I started selling Avon co cosmetics from door to door and become, became the top salesperson in our whole area. And I always created my own jobs. I worked uh, in a summer camp as the director of music and dance and theater and put on a show at the end of the year. I worked in radio stations. I did a lot of different things until I went off to college at 17. So my journey really started very, very young. So what, 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 what is really responsible for making you what you are today? Well, I really have to credit my mom in a lot of ways. I mean, I had the drive. There was no question. I had the drive and I had the ambition. But my parents were very great parents. They were loving. They were wonderful. We never had a lot of money, but we had a lot of love. And I had a lot of tough love. And when things came up that I didn't want to face, I had to face them. And so I learned very early on to face whatever happened and to face it right head on. So that's what I do in my life. I, whatever comes into my life, uh, and there's been a lot, I just face it head on and do what I need to do. Okay, but like, what is your cancer story? What, how that happened? Well, my husband said to me, I really think you ought to get a mammogram. Now, I was only 49 at the time, and at the time, I think the guidelines were 50. And I said, well, you know, I'm so healthy. I work out all the time. I eat right. I, I don't drink. You know, I don't smoke. I should be fine. And he said, well, I really think you ought to go and get one. So I did, and was I surprised, because that's where they found my first cancer. And I've survived breast cancer three times, So, and I've had 16 surgeries. So it was my very first time, and I was really blown away, because I didn't expect it. And, of course, it was at a time, way back in 1987 was my first one, that you didn't talk about it. And, of course, I was on stage speaking all the time. And if anybody knew you had cancer back then, they kind of wrote you off. So I didn't tell anybody. And um, I did what I had to do. I had surgeries and I uh, had radiation. And I used to go um, and, and uh, when I, I couldn't go on the road because I had to have radiation every day. And so with my one big client, I did tell them. And they said they understood and they were fine. 
and they gave me, you know, uh, my six or seven week pass, and um, then I was back on the road. And with the other two times, it was interesting because each of the other two times, the diagnosis was made from a mammogram, so I cannot stress that enough. I think every woman out there, go out and get your mammograms because it's very, very important. Each one was smaller than the last one, and each one was more devastating than the last one. So I've been through 16 surgeries now, and uh, uh, but I'm fine. I'm, I'm cancer free. I go for my checkup in another week, and I'll find out my latest results. But it just, uh, I did what I had to do, and I suggest to every, every woman out there, and every man too, because men get breast cancer, but any kind of cancer, you should get your colonoscopies, you should take care of yourself, because prevention is the most important thing. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear all that story, but you, you came over that and you won and you're a winner, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm very happy with with where I am. I mean, I've got, I, my, my chest looks like a road map and I've got a lot of issues because of all the surgeries that I've had, but I keep going and that's all you can do. And I'm pretty much a, a happy person. I wake up every morning with a smile on my face. I wake up, I go to bed every night with a smile on my face, and um, in case anybody sees a little tail behind me, it's because I have a cat that's in the back of me who just loves to be on these calls with me, and he just, um, I'm scratching him as I'm talking to you. <laughs> okay, I mean, you're, you're a very exciting person. You are enjoying your life. I, I have seen you all over the internet, but I still want to go back to your first time when you got diagnosed with surgery, I mean, not surgery, the cancer. What was your mindset and how you came over all those emotional issues and everything and how, 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 how you're still like a, living a very happy and good life? Well, I, uh, the first thing I asked my doctor was, am I going to live? That was the first thing I asked him. And he said, yes. Even though he told me I had massive breast cancer, which was not true at the time. And so I said, okay. And in those days, there was no computer. So I went to the library and I, I got as many books out as I could. And I read up on everything that was written at the time. And I went to see, I mean, I got in to see cancer specialists that were, that were almost impossible to get into, but I had made up my mind. I wasn't going to take no for an answer. So I saw three doctors and I hadn't even told my family yet. I wanted to get all the all the information I could and then once I got all the information and I decided what I was going to do then I told my family and of course they were shocked because they did not expect anything like that out of me because I was so healthy so um, it was just at that point I mean uh, certainly I mean it was a shock to me and I cried and I thought how did it happen to me I mean I've led such a healthy life but in reality in the end, you have to do what you have to do. So I did what I needed to do. I kept on working all the time. And um, with every other diagnosis, I did the same thing. I mean, literally, I've had a double mastectomy. So, uh, you know, I've gone through that. I've gone through implants bursting. So I've gone through that. I mean, I've gone through everything. And the most important thing, again, is you do what you have to do and you get through it and you keep going and yes i live a very happy life so so if if, if you are talking to some of my listeners and viewers let us say they got diagnosed with the breast cancer this morning what, what is your advice can you talk to straight to them of course i would say first of all find out all your options don't take just one doctor's opinion go to a couple of different get a second opinion and even a third opinion if you want to but check out all your options because there's so many new treatments today and so many new ways of doing things that are not available to me so I would check everything out and then even though I know it's a very difficult time for you you need to do what you need to do because you have to save your life so I would say the most important thing is make sure you have a support team, whoever that may be, whether it be the medical team, whether it be your family, whoever it happens to be. And unfortunately today, people are being diagnosed with breast cancer younger and younger. 
So it's very important that everybody really monitors himself and does, you know, self exams and so forth. However, I would just simply say get a couple of opinions and agree on a source of treatment and then make up your mind it's just what you have to do because in the end you're going to live and that's the key so so at least they should have like a a mindset like they are going to win they are going to they are going to really live and there's there's not, not that much risk on that part well another thing that's a very important about the will to live and the mindset is the fact that the more positive you are and the more joyful you are even in this situation and the happier that you are the stronger your body is to withstand everything that you're going to do whether it's chemo I went through chemo I went through radiation three times I mean you know there's a lot that you go through but you as a matter of fact when I used to go in for my radiation treatments people would call me little miss sunshine and I'd say well why and they'd say well you're always so happy and they they'd say how can you be happy when you're here and I would say because I'm getting cured you know and that's the key so mindset is really important you've got to keep your positivity you've got to keep your your uh, uh, mental attitude being very strong and so forth it's the most important thing you can do because we know that the mind affects the body and therefore you've got to stay as positive as you possibly can be I, I heard you saying a couple of times maybe you said three times like you should have second or third opinion why that is that important well I think it's important because doctors have various opinions on how anything should be treated so if you don't have you know if this is a shock to your system which I'm sure it would be and you don't feel like maybe you're getting the whole picture then go and get a second opinion because various medical centers treat cancer in different ways and you certainly don't have to do that but I think if you if you get a second opinion and it concurs with the first especially as to the kind of treatment you should get then it reaffirms in your own mind yeah this is what I need to do and I'm going to do it but there are several ways now of treating cancer so there might be a different viewpoint I mean some people believe in lumpectomies some people believe in mastectomies some people uh, you're able to treat it through um, lasers and so forth other people uh, there's not that way of treating it some people believe in radiation some people be, believe in in chemo so I think by having various options presented to you and knowing what your treatment could be you can make a more intelligent decision very nice to hear all that because I'm sure this this is going to help somebody I hope it helps somebody because certainly I still believe in prevention early diagnosis is the key to everything so everybody who says oh I'm gonna put off my flu shot I'm gonna in fact I'll give you another story I had a shingles shot and I'm um, sure all of you have seen advertisements on television of how bad shingles can be well I got my shingle shot uh, two or three years ago and I did get a case of shingles but it was so mild that it was there and gone in 10 days and there were no it was no pain or anything I had itching but no pain at all but I had gotten the shingle shot I've gotten my flu shot this year I had my pneumonia shot three or four years ago so I take good care of myself and whatever your situation is don't say oh I'm too busy to go to the doctor now, I'm not telling you to be a hypochondriac <laughs> but I'm I'm saying if you get your checkup once a year and you get your various shots and you get your various preventive exams that's the key to everything I mean if you will not take care of yourself then who will exactly but there are a lot of people who take care of everybody else and there are a lot of people who say well I'm so healthy like I did why do I need to go and get myself checked so you need to make sure that you are checking yourself okay so let us move forward from your cancer like I'm sure that have inspired and taught something to somebody I'm sure so so how, what are your routines what do you do every day how, how you wake up and all that and health wise 
I'm not only talking about health wise, I'm trying to see what do you do for your business and coaching and things like that. I'm just trying to know a little bit of that. Well, I'll every day is different, Sean, because like today I'm taking off, I'm leaving in about an hour on an airplane. So I, it, today is, my, is another travel day for me. But if I'm in town, what I do is the first thing I do when I get up is after taking care of all my animals, I go to the gym. I work out. I work out two hours every day. Then I come back. I don't check my email before then. I don't do any of that. I don't get anything in my head except taking care of my animals and then I, I'm off to the gym. Then when I come back and after I've showered and, and so forth, then I check my email and uh, I see what, what has happened or what I need to respond to and so forth. But normally in a day I could be coaching. I could be doing my radio shows. I, don't, I just started my own radio network for women 50 plus. It's called SOBRadioNetwork.com. And I have two radio shows of my own that are number one and number three called Women in Business and Living Regret Free. So uh, it could be that I'm recording my shows or I'm doing an interview like this. Uh, it could be that I'm studying because I'm always taking courses. I'm always reading books. I'm always uh, trying to learn the latest things it could be that I'm uh, putting together a new speech uh, so it, it's a lot of different things but I spend my time I only check email three times a day I don't let it rule my life even though I get 600 email a day I only check it three times and I also uh, spend my time as I say writing or reading or learning or coaching or speaking, it just depends, or doing uh, radio shows for someone else or myself, or doing TV shows. I do a lot of TV, and um, I also do a lot of traveling because a lot of the things I do require me. And so this month, I'm on the road probably, I would say I'm home only five or six days. The rest of the time, I'm traveling. So your travel is like related to the coaching you do or something like that? Well, it could be me going to seminars and conferences, which I like to do. Um, I live in three places, so I try to get to my other homes and, um, you know, spend some time there. And while I'm there, I do the same thing. I read, I learn, I do shows, um, I do email. But I, uh, wherever I am, I try to keep that routine. When I'm going to conferences, it's a little hard because you start at 8 or 9 in the morning and you go till, you know, 9, 10, 11 at night. But basically, that's, that's what I do. And when I'm on the road, it could be for speaking. It could be for a television appearance. It could be uh, not coaching because the coaching I do usually not, not face-to-face. I do it either through Skype or I do it uh, on the phone. So the coaching is done uh, from wherever I am. But the speaking and the conferences and the TV are done uh, in a lot of different places. So the coaching, let, let, let me get into coaching. What, what coaching really you do? Like is it business coaching or health or something or life coaching? What do you do? Well, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit like a potpourri because I, I concentrate on women over 50, but I do coach everybody but my concentration is women 50 plus and I reinvent themselves from the inside out both personally and professionally so some people I coach in their business I help them grow their business I used to have a company where I had seven offices and 350 people so I understand that part of it and I, I coach them on growing their business some I coach who are also very successful but they're not really happy so I'm trying to show them how different changes in their life can make them happy. Some of them have uh, adult children that have come back to roost. Some have uh, elder parents that they're taking care of. Uh, some have, you know, other situations that they're dealing with. And so they're dealing with a lot of stress in their life because they've got, some of them are very successful and have very high positions and they just have a lot of stress all the time. So I try to go through their day and go through their life and try to eliminate the stressors that are causing them the pain that they have. Can you do some magic in this this conversation today? Can you like you you said you want to know like about the person's routines and things and then help them remove the stress and be happy. Is, is that possible like for the masses you can like help maybe someone to remove the stress 
and make them happy today? It's like there must be some of the common elements and factors. Well, one of the things is I think you have to learn to say no, and that's without feeling guilty. Uh, I mean, when when a lot of people get into the stressful situations they're in because they say yes to everybody. Yes, I'll do this. Yes, I'll do that. And it takes all their time. It takes all their energy. And yeah, there are things you have to be responsible for. If you're a parent, you have to be responsible for your children. If you're a child, you may be responsible to your elder parents. But there are people in your life who are asking you to do things for them that you don't have to do. I mean, if you're if if that is interfering with your free time for yourself to keep your sanity. So learning to say no is the first thing. The second thing is we've talked about it already, but taking care of yourself. If you do work out, you know, you have to do, you don't have to do what I do, but if you do 30 minutes a day of exercise, a really good exercise, that's going to give you the energy to have to do all the things you're doing in your day, but it's also going to tone your body, it's going to keep your mind sharp, and it's also going to allow you to deal with the stressors that come into your life. So exercise is very important. And then I think the third thing I would suggest is being able to, uh, and this is going to be different for people who are employed, people who are entrepreneurs, uh, people who are managing other people because it changes your situation, but you don't have to be responsive right away to everything. For example, if I'm in customer service, of course I have to respond to a customer complaint. Of course I have to deal with them at the front desk if it's a, if it's a retail store, etc. However, there are other things that happen within your office or your store or your life that you don't have to respond to immediately. You can do it on a different time frame. And that's another way of keeping stress out of your life. So with those three things, it really does, uh, it does make a difference in how you react to your day. Very nice. I see a lot of books behind you, you know. Uh, well, I read a book a week, so I've got a lot of books, and um, in fact, I just ordered two more books this morning before our call, and uh, yeah, I do. I read a lot of books. I do. Do you, do you recommend like a, maybe a couple of good books for like well, happiness? you know the books. The books that well, my books are uh, just across the board. I mean, right now I'm reading about a lot of things on the web and how to do webcasts and how to do webinars, and I do webinars. But I always like to see if there's a way I can get better. So I always read the latest book out there. But I think the most important thing in terms of happiness is, for example, um, I I I love reading books about uh, biographies. Biographies make you happy, I think, because they they give you the struggle that people have gone through and, and how they've come out the other side. And most famous people did not start out, uh, you know, on top. They started out with very humble beginnings. Uh, some of them didn't even uh, get a chance to finish school. Some of them uh, have done you know, some not so nice things, but they've learned along the way and they have progressed. So I think just about, you know, any any biography of someone who you admire or you have heard of or you think is great, those people, I would recommend reading biographies. They're very invigorating. Very nice. So, so what, what else should we talk? <laughs> Well, I don't know what you'd like to know, Sean. I think, you know, I think the most important thing I can say to your your listeners, because uh, you've given me an idea that they're really all over the board, is that don't be afraid to dream. Don't be afraid to pursue whatever it is you want to pursue. I always use the analogy of if I could wave a magic wand and if you didn't have any bills and you had no responsibilities, what would you choose to do? Now, some people might say, oh, I'll go live on a desert island and I'll, you know, I won't have any cares or worries. Well, that would be good for about five minutes and then you'd be bored. So really think about what you would do if you didn't have any issues in the world and write that down and then work backwards from there. In other words, uh, my mom always used to say to me, 
Well, I remember you saying that you always wanted to live in a house on the water and you wanted a car in the front and a boat in the back and you'd be happy. Well, I got that. Well, you know what? After I got that, then I changed my dream again and uh, so forth and so on. And now I live in three beautiful places. I live in Miami Beach and San Diego and Palm Springs. You couldn't get three nicer places. And, um, you know, it's, it's what I pursued and what I wanted. So that's why I'm saying to you that, you know, I want people not to think there's an impossible dream because they may not have the money or they may not have the education or they may not have the background. Those things you can get. You can figure out how to get them. It's not going to come right away, but there are ways to get them. Find people to mentor you. Find people to apprentice with. Find people who you uh, would like to uh, follow and see what they do and model what they do. So I think, you know, happiness comes from inside. It comes from your, your heart. So I suggest to everybody, I mean, I, I happen to love my animals. I have two cats and a dog. And when my kids were little and I had the house, I had five dogs and three cats. And I, I just love animals. And so my life would not be complete without them. And so, yeah, they give me trouble and they get sick and they make a mess, but I love them. So what, what, what comes from your heart? What makes your heart sing? And when you find what makes your heart sing, then you know you're on the right track. Very well explained, but I still have a question, whatever we, you just explained. Like, a person like me, I'm just talking about myself. I don't know how many of my listeners and viewers are like me. I'm sure there are some. Like, I believe the dream and whatever you want to pursue or whatever your passion, it changes like time to time, every year or every five year or every ten year. It, you're right, it does. It does, absolutely. And, and not only that, I don't know, like, it's maybe it's a different mindset like I try to do something I may start a business or start reading or learning and things I may go deeper and deeper at some point it's not exciting anymore it's so boring I, I think I have done enough and then I just switch the gears and I'm going 20 degree this way and then this way and this way I always thought this is a fly in my brain why I don't have one passion I just do that rest of my life then I figured out, like, I go this direction, that direction, that direction, that direction. I go and come back, go and come back, and go and come back. Then I figured out, like, whatever I learned on the first path, then the second journey, third journey, it have always helped me to do the next journey faster and better and more efficient. So I don't know what, what, what is your thought. This is the first time I asked somebody, actually. Well, I think that you do go, um, you do change your path, but that's again because you're changing. I mean, life and life experience changes you, so you do change, but, uh, you know, that's the beauty of it. In other words, if you have this dream and you accomplish your dream, then why shouldn't you go on to something else? Now, with me, I've come full circle. I started out at three. I told you dancing and singing. Uh, and Well, not singing at three, but dancing. And I had a musical background. I played the piano and so forth. And I was in theater and that kind of thing. And then I went into business because I uh, first opened a, a modeling school. And that was showbiz in a way because I had a talent agency. And then I opened a convention service company. So uh, and, and then and of course, I started career schools because one thing led to another. So I ended up with, you know, court reporting and legal and medical secretarial and fashion and all of this. And I ended up with seven offices. And I had all these people who were under my direction with the modeling and with the uh, convention service business. And I had actors and dancers and singers and models. And, and, but that became a business. So I had to learn to run a business. As a matter of fact, I was in business for only, I think it was two weeks when I got a cease and desist order, which I didn't even know I, I, what it was. I was 21 years old when I was in business. And so I, I had to hire an attorney, find out what it was. Well, somebody who uh, knew I had just gone into this business 
thought I was going to create this big, huge, humongous thing and slap me with a cease and desist order. Well, I figured out how to run the business. There were some residency requirements that I had to fulfill because uh, I was an, a new person to the state of Florida. And I did that. I ran my business that way for three years. And then I qualified for the license I needed and went on from there. And so then I, from that, I booked speakers because that was part of the convention business. And the speakers that I booked, one was the first president of the National Speakers Association. And he said, you need to be a speaker, Gail. You speak better than I do. And I said, well, I don't have time for that. I'm running a business. Well, finally, three years after that, I went to the first meeting of the, um, my, first, my first meeting convention of the National Speakers Association, and I found out I could make a living at it. So I came home, put my business up for sale. My husband said, what are you going to do now? And I told him I was going to be a speaker, and he asked me what that was. And when I told him, he said, well, who would pay you to do that? Well, I went on to do about 150 programs a year for almost 30 years, and and um, so I, I spoke in 50 countries, 49 states, and then when 9-11 happened and the whole industry changed, I opened my own association, and then I sold it back to my partner, and now, uh, then I went back into speaking uh, at for women, 50 plus, and now I'm back in radio, which is show business again, and started my own network this week so it's come full circle it's gone full circle and uh, I'm back where I started but wow what a trip along the way it's been fantastic <laughs> yeah because during the journey whatever you learn at different time and different business I'm sure it have it's evolution so you, you evolve as a better person every next day is, is the growth exactly and that's why when I say to people tell me your problem tell me your pain tell me your issue I have been through it I have been through just about everything I've lost a husband I've lost a son I've had breast cancer three times I've had 16 surgeries I built a business from zero to seven offices and all those people I've been around the world speaking and consulting and coaching so if somebody is listening to this and saying, wow, could Gail Carson help me? I know I could because I've been through it all. So uh, we are almost close to the end of the show. It has been very inspirational. How, how people can reach you? Like if, if somebody is on the fence and they are not sure what they should be doing and they need some help and guidance, can they reach you directly or something? Absolutely. I'll give you two ways. You can go to my website, which is spunky, S-P-U-N-K-Y, spunkyoldbroad.com, or they can email me at gail, and that's G-A-Y-L-E, Gail Carson 13 at gmail.com. So they can reach me either one of those two ways. If they go to my website and they want to sign up for my newsletter, they'll get a newsletter from me every Monday. And uh, if they want to talk to me about uh, coaching or, or consulting or speaking at their, at their event, they can email me and I would be glad to respond to them. Very good. We will be putting all these links on the website anyway. Wonderful. And I really, really, really thank you and appreciate your time and efforts helping my listeners and viewers. Well, I thank you for having me, Sean. I really uh, enjoy being here, and I, I know that you're trying to reach the world and, and change them in a positive way, so you're doing your job as well. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Do not throw that old phone away. Your trash may be hidden gold. We want your old device and will pay top dollar for it. Our process is as easy as one, two, three. We offer no obligation sales. If you have a problem with the price that we gave you, we will return the device to you at no charge. Fast payment, free shipping, free data wipe, risk-free transaction. Buybackqueen.com.